I have been a gamer for nearly my whole life. From the original Game Boy to the N64, the GameCube, Xbox 360, PS4, I've owned a lot of consoles and played a lot of games. Super Smash Bros., Halo, Grand Theft Auto, Resident Evil, Call of Duty, Mass Effect, Gears of War, The Witcher. Despite having played all these incredible games, none of them come close to Escape from Tarkov in terms of the amount of fun I've had playing the game, how much I've learned about life playing the game, and how many genuine friends I've made through the game. For the record, I'm not someone who likes to exaggerate, so take my previous statement for whatever you think that's worth. I'm not gonna lie to you, I won't be praising Tarkov with rose-colored glasses. It still has some major issues in its current state. If I were to give it a serious score, I'd probably give it an 8.5 out of 10, whereas all the games I mentioned earlier average somewhere around 9.5 out of 10. So what gives? How can an 8.5 game completely outperform numerous 9.5 games by so much that it's not even comparable? Well, we'll go over that in this video, breaking down what makes Tarkov work. For those who have not played Escape from Tarkov, the game is roughly 35% hardcore realistic first person shooter, 20% survival looter, 20% inventory management, 10% loading screens, and 15% bugs, glitches, server, and performance issues. Crazy, right? How do you enjoy a game that is 25% loading screens and dealing with technical issues? You can see why I gave the game an 8.5 out of 10. First, we'll go over the fun factor. Tony Robbins has a saying, progress equals happiness. What makes us happy is progress. Progress equals happiness. If you're not growing, you're dying inside. This quote is a key factor in why Tarkov works. The game operates on a wipe system, where every six months or so, the game resets for everybody. Meaning their character starts back at level one and they have to complete quests to level up. Think of it like the video game version of football season restarting every year, except it's every six months. Though it is tedious for experienced players who have played many wipes, leveling up is the progress that brings the dopamine hits and the corresponding happiness as stated by Tony Robbins. That happiness correlates to fun. This is part of the reason why many players return at the start of a wipe and leave towards the end when there aren't many quests left to do. AKA, little progress leads to less enjoyment. At the end of the wipe, the game becomes a bit boring because you can only PvP for so long before it gets dull. The progress from leveling is only part of the equation for fun though. Tarkov is a game that gives you the thrilling joys of success <laughs> and the crushing blows of defeat. WHAT?! It does this by requiring you to risk losing your hard-earned gear each time you start a game. While it is painful when you lose, the risk is what makes the game exciting. Gamblers know exactly what I'm talking about. Cool. The suffering from the losses is also what makes the victories so good. There is the old Chinese concept of yin and yang. One of its core ideas is that opposing forces are not just complementary, but necessary for each other's existence. What does that mean? Basically, that the bad times are necessary for the good times, because good times are only recognized as good when viewed relative to the bad. If all you had was good times, you wouldn't actually view them positively. You would take them for granted, viewing them as normal and boring. Then you would go somewhere else to find a challenge, or do something to create some chaos. This is why Karens exist. Compared to other games out there, Tarkov delivers pain via losing gear, sometimes to cheaters. There's also boredom from the long loading screens and when the gameplay requires patience. 
but that suffering and boredom are part of what makes the wind so amazing. Ooh, nice shot. <laughs> we killed it. In a strange way, despite all that is negative in Tarkov, everything that is depressing, there is a kind of necessity to it all. They go with the good and are needed for the highs. Sorry for the interruption, but this video is brought to you by Elysium Asunder, a newly released sci-fi novel. I'm just going to publicly say that this book is going to be the next Dune. It might take five years or more, but you heard it here first in September 2024. When your friends figure this out down the road, if you want to be able to tell them that you came across the book in the very beginning, go and grab yourself a copy. Link in the description below. All right, back to Tarkov. I'm not going to go over what I learned about life from Tarkov in this video because it's just a bit too complicated to break down without letting the video length get to 30 plus minutes long. But I will go over why I've made a lot of genuine friends in Tarkov. It comes down to two factors, the difficulty of the game and the boring times in the game. Anyone who has gone through military training understands how close the bonds are between soldiers. Many become lifelong friends after knowing each other for a couple years, sometimes even as little as several months. It's about the men next to you. And that's it. That's all it is. The relationships are strong due to the shared experience of struggling through hardships, whether that is boot camp or combat. Difficult times forge strong relationships, just as intense pressure is needed to create a diamond. It is through hardship that you can really see what someone is made of and can glimpse at their true character. When things are tough, are they going to abandon you for their own benefit? Or do they risk what they have to help you out? Do they lie, backstab, and steal for short-term gains? Bro, what, you, you just gonna take the loot and run away? What, you just taking my loot, brother? Dude, what? You gonna take the scab and take it to the rep You just gonna do me like that, bro? Damn. It's more difficult to figure out who you can trust in easy times and easy games. With Tarkov being so hard and punishing, it allows you to see beyond the surface level facade of the people that you are playing with. And it is only from that perspective that you can figure out who you should build genuine relationships with. This is all inadvertently aided by the loading screens and all the other boring stuff in the game, like stash management. These moments give you time to chat with your buddies, provide support as needed, and joke around for some laughter. The downtimes are what allowed me to build genuine relationships with friends. All of this being said, Tarkov is not a game for everybody, at least if you're playing it super seriously. But if you do decide to get into this amazing game, maybe just keep in mind all the things we covered. Then have some great moments and meet some good people.